Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dry Fire Tools of the Trade. And today, we're gonna to be working on movement. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you will know that anything and everything that you do on the range during your live fire practice, you can do in the comfort of your own home, or in my case, my garage. So, let's get after it. Let me show you some of the things that I am working on and hopefully give you some tips and tricks to help you with your own skill development. All right, so starting out, what we're doing here is what's called a Delta 7. It is basically three cones set up in a triangle formation, and this drill was taught to me by the one and only Pat McNamara. It's one of my favorite drills, not only for beginners learning what proprioception is, which is the awareness of our bodies in space, which is the important part of movement, whether you're shooting for defensive situations or competitive situations, and it's just a good, simple, space-confined drill or movement exercise that we can do here. As you can see here, I don't know if you guys can see on the video, but I got my weight rack here. I also got my beer fridge here, so I'm kind of confined in space. So with dry fire, what can I do to maximize that space while still getting some good repetitions out? All right, so let me go through the Delta 7, as you can see here. It is an inverted triangle as we're looking at the screen. Basically, you're gonna start at the top of the triangle and go either side, circle all the way back around to the top of the triangle, and then you would wanna come back the way you came. Seven positions in a triangular formation, hence Delta Seven. Need to look it up by Pat Mac, fantastic little drill. So, let me walk you through it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right guys, so that's the Delta 7. So obviously it's super duper simple, very easy to set up. You don't have to buy these cones, although if you go to Walmart or your local sporting goods store, you can find a whole stack of these cones for probably five, ten dollars pretty cheap. I like using them because I will pack them up and take them with me to the range. Now, obviously I'm just showing you Delta 7, we'll get to more in later. Why is it important, I mentioned proprioception earlier, to not hit my cones? Where could that be important in regards to our development as a shooter, specifically for competition? Ideally, think about it as far as entries and exits. Think about if you're at your local match or big match, it doesn't matter, and you're coming into that hot spot, you're driving forward, wanna drive your gun, and you know it's at an angle and you gotta take out several targets or take on several targets, and you don't quite reach that right angle and you either have to shift your feet or lean further out. Why? Usually that is because you did not hit or you were not precise in where your entry point was. You didn't pick out a particular spot on that stage, didn't visualize it, what have you. What happens here with these types of drills, if you incorporate them into your dry fire and you make every effort to not hit the cones, Whenever, even if you have to glance down and come forward and you put that foot as close as you can to that cone, that helps with accuracy and precision in regards to your entries getting into position. Don't let this drill fool you. Some of you guys, if you notice you're having a hard time with low ports or something like that, there's no reason that you can't drive down into a lunge position or anything that you tend to see at your local matches or something that you know is coming up at nationals, a level two, whatever. Just something to bear in mind. So we're gonna set up another little drill that's pretty, uh, pretty good for space limited stuff and we'll go from there. Starting on either side, you can basically make your X first. So it doesn't matter, I'm on the back right here or on your screen, it's probably top left. So what I mean by making your X first is I'm simply gonna come here, over, then X. As you can see here, I made my X and I made my X first within the square how people write the exit. All right, so basically, I'm just gonna run through this once. I'm gonna use my infinity ammo, i.e. dry fire slash my zip tie effect there. And what I like to do the most here is because it gets me moving in multiple directions is I'm gonna draw my X first and we'll do that and then we'll move on to one more drill after that. So again, starting at the rearward most, I'm gonna present the gun. I'm shooting at ipsic target, so I'm just gonna shoot twice. Shoot three, six, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about your reload here. Worry about what your front sight is doing 
as you move or right after you move because what will happen sometimes is as you move guys whenever they bring it back to a compressed ready nothing wrong with that but they want to jut the gun out real fast okay I'm in my new position let me jut the gun out well what happens there is you jut the gun out right there or push it out punch it out and that front sight wants to wiggle and while it's still wiggling from you punching the gun out aggressively is start to press that trigger so now you're introducing two different types of movement because sometimes you may not have that grip established it's still moving it up and who knows where those rounds are going so pay attention to what my muzzle is doing because when I come into a position I want the muzzle steady before or steady enough where I am happy with where my rounds would go if I were to break that shot so starting here going up there to the front right on your screen there so from here, starting from a high compressed ready, I'm gonna simply push the gun out, press several shots there. As you can see there, I pressed the gun out. As soon as the gun stops moving, I was pressing the trigger. Not only that, but I simply pushed the gun out. I did not punch it out, I pressed it out, okay? Something I kind of picked up from Todd Green um, back in the day is pressing the gun out. My front side is right there, and I have an acceptable sight picture. So moving on, I'm gonna to go to my right, again now from here i don't want to just look at the cone and know where i'm going to make my entry but i so another thing let's go ahead and jump ahead and get to some more tips and tricks not only do we not need to be punching the gun out and creating more muzzle movement we need to be thinking efficiency not speed sooner not faster now tends to be the new word of the day so on and so forth what does that mean well, sooner, not faster, is simply doing as many steps as possible at the same time, not necessarily rushing to do them quickly. So, not only will people do things fast and want to punch the gun out, creating that muzzle movement, I know you can see it on the camera, they were creating that artificial movement that I simply don't need and it causes me to have to slow down to get a sight picture. That is what that does. But what people will also do is they'll run while creating steps. So even if I have fast feet, they'll look, step, set, punch the gun out, refine the sight picture, press the trigger. Y'all, that's gotta be like five steps. What we need to be doing sooner, i.e. more efficiently, is doing many of those things at the same time as much as possible. Going back to proprioception, remember, this is kind of a fundamental thing in regards to movement, so you'll see that again. All I need to do is glance to once to know where I'm going. Even though I'm using cones, that could easily be a fault line. If I know I'm gonna be using the edge of a fault line at a match, all I wanna to do to get into position to present the target is just a glance. After I glance and I know where I'm going, trust my feet to go where they need to go. Guys, we do it every day, okay? Shooting at a match or at a class or anything like that is no different. From there, I wanna look at the target that I'm ready to engage. From here, I will either have a high compressed ready if I've been moving or running or already have the gun out glance move shooting from there okay instead of stepping up there now I know it's hard for you guys to see my feet at this angle but if you can tell here my back foot has drug a little bit and it's all has is a ways out and my hips are slightly turned again you don't have to have a perfect stance to make acceptable shots it doesn't matter if you're at three yards 15 20 yards you don't have to have a perfect stance from here, all I have to do is simply bend my knees, look at where I'm going from there, and then make the appropriate movement. Again, when it comes to this movement here, think sooner, not faster. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency is the name of the game. If you look at the top competitors or your local Hottie McHawk dog, there you go, Steve, just for you, those guys are generally simply way more efficient. A lot of guys can shoot quickly, but they're way more efficient, not just in their stage plan, but in how they move and how they present the gun, whether they do it on the move or if they do it at the same time coming into that position. Just something to think about. Hopefully this X squared helps you out. We'll do one more and we'll get back to the basics. As you can see here, this is just a basic, what I call the W drill. Many of you will recognize it for what it is. It's a pretty common footwork drill for any sport you may find yourself doing that incorporates a lot of footwork and directional changes of course I've got it pretty compressed here because of space considerations I can always widen it I can lengthen it if I need to to get really narrow if you guys are thinking about more into a competitive aspect think about what this could do for you 
in helping you not just your direction like any other sport but even if you have it compressed like I do here like you're moving in and out of a very compressed position like you do at some matches where you may have a right or left directional change and you don't move very far only one or two steps fantastic drill for this something else to consider is that you don't necessarily have to have a firearm to work on your footwork obviously so even if you just use the cones set this up in your living room you just want to work out a little bit get your heart rate up a little bit these drills can also be done that way you're still getting the benefit of footwork directional changes proprioception entries and exits you name it you can still work on those things if you don't have cones what I have done before is I've used water bottles cheap easy right and not only that but it makes you be more precise with your footwork knock over a water bottle boom there it goes you failed this is more of compressed drill but it's more of a speed drill in regards to our footwork okay in regards to it's not necessarily about engaging that target but it's about presenting the gun quickly moving quickly getting back up moving quickly getting back up it's very simple to a ladder drill or excuse me very similar to a ladder drill that you see a lot of athletes using if you haven't noticed i've been using football cones so to speak think about it if guys like football players soccer players basketball players or anything like that even tennis players if they work on their footwork and they do a lot of intensive footwork directional change movement transverse plane movement why can't we as shooters train the same way do you not think it would help I'm not saying you're going to go out and beat rob latham or ben steg or anything like that but if you can gain any little bit of edge in regards to your footwork proprioception and just getting your body used to turning in multi directions just like we do at a standard match can't hurt not to mention if it enlivens or engages you more with your dry fire i say have that all right guys that's all i've got for today thank you for watching another video of dry fire tools of the trade i really hope you guys enjoyed it i really hope that somebody got some type of tip trick or some type of knowledge to help them increase or enliven their dry fire and make it more efficient i really enjoy doing these so please hit me up with a like comment subscribe every little bit counts and i will see you next time